All right, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. Got to show my uh, my book, basically. <laughs> um, if you're new to the channel, this is what I do uh, usually on a daily basis with uh, each and every video where I talk about my uh, debut novel, Gods and Gods, Children of Randall Care. Uh, if you head on over to Amazon, uh, the paperback is $16 or you go with uh, Kindle Unlimited, it's free. Or if you buy on Kindle, it's $9.99. Uh, it's a mature dark fantasy that focuses on a divine family, mainly, uh, again, the children of Randall Kier as they uh, grow up over time throughout the book. And they are basically going to become defenders of existence, <clears throat> excuse me, of existence and against uh, a wraith blood that lurks in the darkest corner doing uh, dastardly deeds. So uh, this book is pretty hefty, 596 pages. There is several uh, illustrations in there too, some that are not safe for work. Again, it's a mature dark fantasy. And if it seems like something you're interested in, go ahead. There's um there's an actual sam uh, sampler too, which spans from the prologue to the second chapter, I believe. So um, check it out, please and thank you. I also want to bring attention to my comic book. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. My comic book over on um, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, artwork is by my boy, Nefarious Watcher, talented artist and friend. And this is also uh, Dark Fantasy, which focuses on uh, two enti entities that fight, that have been fighting for a long time, for centuries, I should say. And this is a safer work version too, so don't be alarmed if you see some uh, sexy characters. <laughs> so, and this updates weekly. So right here, I just this has been posted on Sunday, pages four, five, and six. And I mean, it's I was having the links. Um, description down below and all that so there it is y'all all right time to get into the more interesting subject so i uh i don't know what's going on with this whole mass effect board game thing because i i literally just learned about it yesterday and as you guys will see when i pull up the stuff uh, um, oh boy, where, where do I, uh, go with this? <laughs> because, um, I'm kind of just, I don't know, a little baffled. So this is by Grums. Um, he's been bringing attention to this lately. And the reason why I'm talking about this, because I, I love Mass Effect. I do. Even Andromeda to a point, even though that's been kind of, it's kind of, uh, I, I respect it. A lot more than um, certain EA titles that have been coming out lately. So, hey, God, take what you get, I guess. But um, here's the update. They are banning accounts that vote one star. First, your review is removed. And if you attempt to repost it, your account is locked. This is, um, this is, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is on the BGG website, which I totally forgot what it stands for. But that's where um, the board game is being mainly being marketed, uh, reviewed at, really. And I'd done a video on on this previously, which should be coming up like towards the end of this video, if you, if y'all stick around long enough for that. Uh, it says continuing on, I'm getting multiple reports that people leaving one star reviews on the Master Effect uh, Priority Hagalas. I can't pronounce that. Board game are getting deleted on Board Game Geek. Ah, oh, that's what it means. Board BGG, Board Game Geek's website. The designer called for people to brigade good reviews to offset the one-star reviews left by man babies. Um, they were upset. Pronouns were uh, were added to iconic Mass Effect characters like Laura being marked as they them. It was um yeah it was a she it was a she they pronouns. So stupid. <laughs> uh, so far, the ten-star uh, brigading is allowed to stand, but the one-star reviews are getting yeeted. 
Comparison shows that the number of one-star review fell from 10 to 8, but it is claimed many more were deleted before the time of yesterday's screen capture. You can see that the list, uh, see the list of an, you can see the list in a screenshot below. All right, so here's the stuff right here, the artwork for it, and there's just the ratings breakdown. So there's 14, 10, um, there's 14, 10 ratings. 9 and then 21 and then 10. All right. So this is before, I guess, and this is after. Yeah. All right. I'm, I can't read all that. Even that's kind of small, but. And then here's uh, Eric Lang. That's the creative di director of this uh, board game uh, saying, I hate even talking about this on social media, but uh, if you play Mass Effect TBG, uh, would you mind giving it a rating on BGG to also the effing man, man babies uh, trying to tank the rating uh, with ones because they can't handle looking at pronouns on a character sheet. And I covered this in yesterday's video, so this is, this is just like a little recap. But I'm just kind of looking all the way. I don't want to go all the way down. I don't want to see anything too crazy. <laughs> but that's it for that one update. But for this next update, um, I made sure to grab the links before I went to work and uh, also after work. So got this one on here. Let's see. Let's see. See, Mass Effect board game, this is by Grums. This is all, all these uh, Twitter posts are, are going to be by Grums. Um, Mass Effect board game designer is full on DEI, cites the fully discredited McKinsey Kinsey report that DEI is good for companies. So here's a screen capture of this from uh, March 23rd by Eric Lang. Now that the worst people on earth learned about DEI, like yesterday, of course, they waste no time corrupting it. The newest didn't earn it. You know, from the A clowns who have no problem with birthright citizenship and inheritance, it's not about merit. It's just bigotry. Uh, January 14th, when I worked with Exploding Kittens to hire, what the hell kind of name is that? <laughs> to hire for their creative teams, we used DEI assisted professional recruiter sourcing outside the uh, hobby game industry talent pool, AKA the rest of the world. Qualified creatives were all over the demographic spectrum. DEI is effective. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. Uh, January 13th. Okay, so this was a day before um, the previous post. Uh, January 13th. Hey, y'all, I'm going to be on DEI for a bit, so feel free to ignore. It's frustrating that in a relatively new field where we've made a ton of gains elevating the professional discourse, that a few wealthy a-holes, hacks, get to reset it back to South Park level, attacking the premise. <clears throat> this easily debunked info targets, low information people who don't understand the premise at all, but have a bug in their A about wokeness for whatever reason. It is frustrating and be warned that idiot misinformation uh, masquerading as debate won't be treated with respect. Uh, because many would rather not learn what DEI actually is and just accept the um, the usual lazy right wing for fear. I'm sorry, y'all. It's, it's kind of getting it's like kind of small uh, lettering. Um, right wing fear mong mongering. Here is an article from McKinsey and Company. Pretty much the least left leaning a political source you can get. It's actually pretty decent. So yeah, I mean it's not really giving me any like confidence in, in this stuff you know your thing is you're supposed to be promoting the game the board game not going on this tangent stuff and i understand i we go on tangents here and there because we're human but come on dude be a little bit professional at least just so got another post from grums uh, with this update saying uh eric lang mass effect board game designer not above 
assert, inserting woke propaganda into his games. Uh, designer of the Mass Effect board game is a woke activist who believe that there are no bad tactics and that the left should engage in propaganda. Uh, this is what we've been talking about. The force messaging being put into games as a political agenda. <laughs> sorry. Agenda. Keep politics out of Mass Effect. <clears throat> Man, oh, that's it's so small to read. Hold on. Hold on, let me see this. All right, so this is what it says. Uh, on September 16th by Eric Lang. I agree with 80% of economic left ideas, even slightly left of Bernie Sanders. And I hate that somehow we think A, propaganda is beneath us. It's not. B, our slogans are are effective they're not c being righteous um uh, is better than being effective it's not um i won't even go into the online left which i agree is largely a dysfunctional clown card full of trauma i agree with the ideas hate the tactics let's start hot make america great again is the most effective slogan in our lifetimes i'll argue possibly of all time yes it's 100 percent a fascist slogan Checks all the boxes. Nostalgic, mythic, lyrical, vague. That's exactly the point. Unless you're a radical ex accelerationist who wants to burn it all down, I'm not. You're stuck operating in today's world. Don't compromise on values, but absolutely, absolutely compromise on tactics. Use propaganda. It's effective. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That's, that's not good. Not good at all. And so, uh, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to stop sharing that screen for y'all. But there's also this picture here. Uh, October 7th, <laughs> so not too long ago, uh, with the owner of this platform going full mass off MAGA, I just don't know how long I can stay on this platform. Which effing sucks because I generally love my followers and I recognize the ability to spread joy and do some real good here. And then here's, um, geez, uh, I guess it's just Eric Ling reposting what David Hogg, I don't know who that is, uh, posted said, this is the guy who claimed we, he wanted to make Twitter neutral and free of political bias. What was it three months ago? I mean, look. We can definitely have our um, disagreements about things. But the thing is, the fact is that, you know, talk about you're fine with using propaganda and you're agreeing with the online left. You don't like their tactics, but you agree with their ideas. It's, it's, it's you know, <laughs> I mean, dude, you kind of sound like you just you're, you're, you want you're wanting a lot of power or something, dude. I, I don't know. I just know that uh, you, you need to get checked out, dog. And then with this last one by Grums, <laughs> update. Over 40 Mass Effect 1 star reviews deleted. Lead designer screenshot confirms. The designer for Mass Effect Priority Halgaz um, has deleted his post on X, calling me uh, Mass Effect fans man babies. However, he is still posting on Blue, where he doubles down and inadvertently posted the number of one star reviews that existed prior to deletion. Wow. And I'm and I'm learning as I go with this. I really haven't looked at these. So that's it right there. Okay, so uh, so I'm so <clears throat> I, I'm pretty sure I I read this already. Uh, I'm so proud of uh, Mass Effect and so and so endlessly tired of the effing man babies who try to tank our. BGG rating because we took 10 seconds to add pronouns to the squad mates. And yes, I realized that reacting to them gives them oxygen, but F off. I get to be mad about this stupid S. Uh, this is what you get for letting your guard down for one second and speaking in anger. F me. I'm just tired. Uh, yikes. Yeah, dude. I This sucks, dude. I really wanted to buy this game. I really wanted to buy this board game. I love, I love, love, love Mass Effect. Now, 
I definitely don't agree with them trying to go back to the Mass Effect, like the original characters with this Mass Effect 5. I think they should have really honestly expanded more on Andromeda and focus on those characters instead of just giving up. Was Mass Effect Andromeda flawed? Yes. But what, there was high potential there. There was. Absolutely. People were pretty angry about the DLC that was supposed we were supposed to get DLC for it being canceled because of reasons. And it was supposed to be turned to a book, but then they 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 shot that down and Andromeda's been on ice. Um so you know, seeing that trailer for y'all who who know Mass Effect or have been, you know, are or were Mass Effect fans, um, you definitely know about that teaser trailer they brought out with like showing Le- uh, Liara and the crew from the original trilogy, and it's like, oh look, we're going, we're going back to to um, back to them. Be excited, and I'm just like, dude, what's the point? What is the point of even? <sighs> what is the point of that? Like, we literally ended Ma- the Mass Effect trilogy. I mean, we literally ended the Sh- Shepard's story. Could we do like a, like a little in be- in between? Yeah, I guess we could. I think that you know, I don't think that'd be too bad. You know, do a little in between game, between you know, be ha- it literally has to be before, uh, Mass Effect Two, so it would be nice, you know, with with going back to like the ME One stuff and see how you know that was, and you know, you know that'd be pretty cool but i don't know i guess i don't know what i'm talking about about certain things you know it's not like i i care about the um the franchise well sort of kind of again with it being whatever the heck they're doing the mass effect dude it's just it's not going to be good this 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 board game is um It's infected with, infested with politics, weird gender, gender ideology and stuff like that. And we're going to, you know, I expect the same with Mass Effect 5 or whatever the hell it's going to be called. So that's my take on everything. Um, Yikes, dude. Alrighty, so that's the end of it. See y'all later. Ciao.